Hello friends, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the General Conference Administration Seminar Back to Fundamentals. I hope you watched and that you are blessed uh, yesterday's seminar on the Sabbath by Brother Silva. And please remember there is one more tomorrow presented by Brother Peter Lausevic. We are going to be blessed as we are looking back to our fundamental beliefs, to our principles. And now, before we listen to the message, let us open with the hymn. At this moment, I invite you uh, for the opening prayer. And as far as possible, we will kneel down and Pastor Marian Serbu will lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, your beloved Son and our Redeemer, we thank thee for this opportunity to hear again the Word of God. And to, uh, today we would like that in our hearts you may put more of your Holy Spirit and anoint your messenger for today, Brother Eli, that he may speak the timely message for us. Help us, Lord, to understand our high calling to be a peculiar people, to be separated from the world, to be for your glory, preparing ourselves for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless your people around the world. Bless all of us with understanding on the present truth and help us, Lord, to dedicate our life to you, to surrender ourselves to you and to uh, proclaim the gospel for our neighbors and to preach uh, this wonderful news to everyone that we may uh, be ready and prepare the people for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask those things not because we are worthy. We ask in the merits and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your beloved Son. Amen. I'm delighted to introduce the speaker of today, Brother Eli Tenorio, the President of the General Conference. And he will present the message under the title, Separation from the World. I hope you are blessed 
by listening to this message. Hello, dear church family. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. I pray that wherever you may be, you may be enjoying the presence of the Holy Spirit in your heart. We are here today to continue the seminar prepared by the General Conference, Back to Fundamentals. And the topic for today is separation from the world. The Bible tells us a story about that time when Jesus had over 130 disciples, and he gave a sermon, and the, many of those disciples could not bear the message of Jesus. It is registered there in John chapter 6, and it says that many of his disciples from that moment on could not walk with Jesus anymore. They left Jesus. As I said, he had over 130 disciples, and only 12 remained with him. What was the difference between the 12 disciples that remained with Jesus and the other almost 130 that left him? The difference was that those 12 disciples they had walked closer to Jesus. They had experienced Jesus. They knew who Jesus was to such a point that in that day, when Christ was entering Jerusalem, they were used by the Holy Spirit to quote the prophecies about Jesus. Who was Jesus for them? Who was Jesus for the universe? Desire of Ages, page 578 says, Adam will tell you, it is the seed of the woman that shall bruise the serpent's head. Ask Abraham, and he will tell you, it's Melchizedek, king of Salem, king of peace. Jacob will tell you, he is Shiloh of the tribe of Judah. Isaiah will tell you, Emmanuel, wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Jeremiah will tell you, the branch of David, the Lord our righteousness. Daniel will tell you, he is the Messiah. Hosea will tell you he is the Lord God of hosts. The Lord is his memorial. John the Baptist will tell you he is the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. The great Jehovah has proclaimed from his throne, This is my beloved Son. We, his disciples, declare, This is Jesus the Messiah, the Prince of life, the Redeemer of the world. And the Prince of the powers of darkness, acknowledges him, saying, I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. The disciples knew who Jesus was. They knew all the testimonies given the word of God. And that's why those 12 disciples did not leave Jesus. They remained with Jesus. And Jesus, looking to the 12, put them to test yet, tried them. He looked to them and said, Do you want to leave me as well? And Peter gave Jesus the answer that we all should give Jesus every day, all the days of our lives. Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Only thou hast the words of eternal life. Those twelve disciples knew that the world could not give them what Jesus could give. They knew that only Jesus could give them eternal life, could take them to live with him in a world better than this one. My dear friend, that's what God wants us to know. He wants us to know Him as He is, that He is the Prince of Peace. He is the only one that can give us happiness. He can give us the happiness that the world cannot give us. He is the King of Kings. He is the Savior of our souls. He is the Father that loves us and carries us in His arms of love. Once we understand the love of God, nothing in this world can attract us to separate us from God. Jesus always cared for his church while he was here in this world. He cared for the disciples, and he continued caring to the, for the church until the end, to the point that he cared for you and for me. In John chapter 17, has one of the most beautiful prayers found in the Bible. That was the day when Christ was praying for the church. And when I say he was praying for the church, it means he was praying for you, and he was praying for me. Let's read together John chapter 17, verse 15 to 17. says the word of God. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, 
even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Dear friend, dear brother, dear sister, Jesus here, when he was raising to the Father this prayer, he had you and me in mind. And he prayed to the Father and he said, Father, deliver them from evil. It's not time for them to leave this world yet. They have a task to accomplish here. So I don't ask you to take them away from this world, but I ask you to protect them. I ask you to deliver them from, from the evil one. They are not of the world. Do you understand what Christ was saying here? He was saying that you and me, we are not from this world. We are just passing by. But one day, very soon, he's coming to take us to live with him in paradise. James chapter 4, verse 4 in the Bible says, let's read together. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. These are harsh words, very strong words that God talk, tells us here. What does he mean with that? God wants us to understand one thing. When we come closer to the world, we become enemies of God. The Bible is not telling us here, the Lord is not telling us here, you know, if you go closer to the world, I don't want to have anything with you anymore. You, I, I become your enemy and I don't care about you anymore. That's not what the verse is saying here. Let's understand what the Lord is saying here. He's saying, those that become friends of the world, they become my enemies. We become enemies of God, not He becomes our enemies, our enemy, but we become His enemies when we come closer to the world. What the Lord means here is, closer we come to the world, less we feel the need of this Father that loves us. More we go astray, further and further we go from Him. The world, the things of this world that has this power of separating us from God. In God, in his love, in his grace, in his mercy, he's telling us here, don't go closer to the world or you are going to become my enemy. You become my enemy despite of all the love I have for you. Despite all I'm doing to save you, you don't feel the need of being saved if you are close to the world, if you become friends to the world. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 and 17, God, he talks to us once again. He pleads with us, saying, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, in the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abides forever. So the Lord in his mercy is telling you and me these words, saying, don't love the world, neither the things that are in the world. Because if you love these things, you, is, you, are, you are going to let the love for me to diminish, and finally, you are not going to love me anymore. And I love you so much that I gave you my only begotten son, to die for you on the cross of Calvary. I have done, and I still do whatever I can to save you. So don't love the world. Don't go astray. Don't leave me. That's the plea of God to you and to me. And why God is pleading with us? He tells us in this verse we just read. He said, because all these things of this world are going to pass. If you choose the world, the, the world you are going to receive what the world can give you. And what is it that the world can give you? The world can give you some moments of happiness, of apparent happiness. The world can give you some moments of fame, some years of fame in this world here. But in the end, when we come to that day, when we are going to sleep, to die, what will be of your life and my life? God said, you know, if you choose the world, that's all you get. It's what the world can give you, but I have something much better for you. So remember, he says, the lust of this world perishes. The love of this world perishes. Everything in this world has an end. But I have a life for you that's endless. A life that cannot be compared with anything in this world. A happiness that anything in this world can fulfill. When we understand this love of Jesus for us, we understand those words of Peter that he said, Lord, where shall we go? Only thou hast eternal life. 
Peter and those 12 disciples, they understood something that those uh, almost 130 disciples could not understand. Peter and the, uh, the other disciples, the other 11 disciples, they understood that it was better to be a slave or a prisoner in this world, world with Jesus than to be a king in this world without Jesus Christ. When we remember of prisoners in the past, like Jeremiah, John the Baptist, they were in prison, but now they have an eternal life hidden with Christ that is going to give them in that day of resurrection. Then we remember those kings that were in those days, like Herod. Where is, it, where is Herod today? It was better to be a prisoner like John the Baptist than to be a king like Herod. And the disciples understood it. And that's why they decided, they said, we are not going to go anywhere. We remain with thee, Lord, because only thou has eternal life. Only thou has the words of eternal life. On the testimony for, for the church, volume 5. The inspiration says, page 602, there is a distinct line drawn by God himself between the world and the church, between commandment keepers and commandment breakers. They do not blend together. They are as different as midday and midnight, different in their tastes, their aims, their pursuits, and their characters. That's what God is telling you and me here. We are different from the world. He put a separation, a line that separates his church from the world, that he separates his children from the children of this world. We are different. We like different things. We have different perspectives. We have different goals in our lives. And our character is different because the grace of Jesus, his love, his death for us on, cross, on the cross of Calvary makes a difference in your life, has brought change to our lives. His love, we understand the love of God. And when we understand the love of God, nothing in this world can separate us from him. Not even all the temptations of this world, not all the offers of this world will be able to separate us from God when we understand how much he loves us, how much he cares for us, how much he suffered for us on the cross of Calvary. I, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 and 18, the Lord calls us once again and he tells us, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and these shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. That's the relationship God wants to have with you and with me. A relationship of father and son. A relationship of father and daughter. And God is telling you and me, saying, separate from the world so you can understand my love. Separate yourself from the things, from the pleasures of this world, from the tendencies of this world, so you don't go astray from me because I want you close to my heart. That's the invitation of God saying, separate from the world. A testament for the church, volume 5, page 12, says the word of God. These are the conditions upon which we may be acknowledged as the sons of God. Separation from the world and renunciation of those things which delude and fascinate and ensnare. This is what the world wants to do with us. The, the world wants to do with me and with you, to delude, to fascinate, and to ensnare us. But uh, these are illusions of the world, and God is saying, you know, don't get uh, deceived by the things of this world. They can give you just a momentary happiness, but they can give you a happiness without end. The world can give you some time of life here in this planet, but I can give you eternal life in a world that is incomparable, that cannot be compared with anything in this earth. Don't allow the things of this world to ensnare you, to delude, to fascinate you, because I have something much more fascinating, some, something much better for you. Testimony for the Church, volume 1, page 137, says, God will have a people separate and distinct from the world. And as soon as any have a desire to imitate the fashions of the world that they do not immediately subdue, just so soon God ceases to acknowledge them as his children. They are the children of the world and of darkness. So the word of God says clearly that God will have a people in this world, a people that is separate, that is distinct, 
that is different, that the world look at them and see that they are different. And continues the word of God telling us here that if we choose the fashions of this world, then we separate ourselves from God. And he stops recognizing us as his children because we don't feel the need of this father of love. And we lose this communion, this connection with him. When we follow, says here, when we imitate the fashions of this world. And it's interesting that uh, the Bible in the Spirit of Prophets is clear about the way we should dress. And God is not telling you and me that we should dress carelessness in any fashion. No, he's telling us we should dress ourselves with good taste. And the inspiration even tells us that if the fashions of this world are not contrary to the principles of the world of God, that's okay, and we should dress nicely and neatly. The problem with the fashion of this world is that most of them are contrary to the principles of the word of God. But when they are according to the principles of the word of God, we should, we can and we should just dress appropriately in such a way that the world look to our, the way we dress, they see that we have good taste, that we have moral in the way we dress, and that we are serving God and preparing for a, a world much better than this one. There are many fashions in the world that uh, are addressed in the book Christian Fundamental Beliefs that tells us what are these kind of fashions of the world that are contrary to the word of God. There it quotes, for example, the wearing of shorts by men or wom women. It's contrary to the principles of, God, of the word of God. The wearing of pants by our sisters, we all know it's not appropriate. It's contrary to the principles of the world of God, the, the word of God. Uh, See-through fabric, too tight dresses, all these things are commented there. I'm not going to go into all the details of the dresses that can separate us from God. Because you know, we all know the word of God is full of uh, orientation. We have decisions from the uh, resolutions from the uh, general conference session that are known that we should obey the voice of God. Listen to the voice of God and not be attracted by the fashions of this world when they are contrary to the principles of the word of God. God has told us how to dress appropriately to show to the world that we are his children. But I want to tell you one thing. All these things we are supposed to do, we are supposed to keep the Sabbath in such a way that the world can see that we are different from the world. We are supposed to have a good diet, eat differently from the world, that when the world look to us, they see that we feed ourselves, we eat for the glory of God. We take good care of our bodies. And we are supposed to dress in the way the word of God tells us. But all these things can only be done through the grace of Jesus Christ. I don't know what is the difficulty you face today to separate yourself from the world. Maybe it's keeping the Sabbath. Maybe some difficulty you have in your diet. Maybe it's some difficulty you have in your dress. Maybe some difficulty you have with tithes and offerings. And I, was, I want to tell you one thing. You can make all the effort, all the human effort possible. You can even cry in your bed because you know you are doing something wrong. But the secret of the success, the secret to overcome these things is in the person of Jesus Christ is walking with him, talking to him, reading his word, praying to him, and looking to Calvary that will enable you and me to serve God the way he wants us to serve him, to separate us from the world in such a way that we can have this communion that brings true happiness to our lives. First testimony, page 133, continues the word of God. Jesus is coming. And he will find that people conform to the world. And will he acknowledge this as his people that he has purified unto himself? Oh, no, he will not. That's what the word of God says. What is the kind of people that Christ will recognize as his? None. But the pure and holy will he acknowledge as his. Those who have been purified and made white through suffering, and have kept themselves separate, unspotted from the world, he will own 
as his. The a people that have made a concert with Christ, with sacrifice. A people that through the sacrifice of Christ has uh, accept the white clothes that the Lord provide for us. These are the ones that will walk with Jesus in the golden streets of the new world. As I said, we can put all human efforts, but without Jesus, we are like branches of a tree that are cut off and is dried and dying. We need the grace of Jesus. We need to understand the love of God. And only understanding this love of God, contemplating Jesus on Calvary, can give us the strength we need to overcome those things that brings us closer to the world and farther from God. I want to continue reading now on Fourth Testimony, page 641. It says the word of God. Our words, our actions, and our dress are daily living preachers, gathering with Christ or scattering abroad. So what the word of God is telling us here is that the way we live preaches about Christ or against Christ. How is the, your actions, how are, I mean, your actions preaching today? Your words, are you a patient person? A person that shows tender care for others in your actions? Are you patient with your children, with your spouse? Have you been able to treat others as you want to be treated? There is only one way, only through the grace of Jesus. Look into Calvary, trusting him, trusting that he forgives you when you fail, and understanding his love will give you the peace that enables you to be patient and loving. How about your actions? Have you got involved with politics in this world? Have you defended a candidate in your country, wherever you may be? The Word of God tells us not to get involved with politics. Let the dead bury the dead. That's what the Word of God says. Those that are dead in sins and offenses, they have to take care of some things in this world that is not our work to take care of. So let's not get involved with politics. Have you got involved, too much involved with games? Soccer games, football games, these things that take too much of your time, that lead you closer to the world, and farther from God? Have you spent too much time playing games in your computer, in your cell phones? These things bring us, bring us closer to the world and farther from God. And it's saying here, our words, our actions, and our dress are daily living preachers, gathering with Christ or scattering abroad. What are the difficulties you have in your life to leave the world and come closer to Jesus? One day God called us from, out from the world. He has given us the privilege to come to the church. Now he is just concerned that we may go too far from him and too close from, from the world. Are there still some things, some small details in your life that is holding you back of having a better communion with Jesus Christ or feeling his presence more in your life? I don't know the struggles you are facing. I don't know what is the difficulty you have in your life, but Jesus knows. When I first came to the church, when I arrived in the church, there were some things in my life that were more difficult to, to quit. I was a flesh food eater, and that was not something easy to live, to change my diet. I was a soccer player. I played for the, uh, the class team. I played for the school team. And of course, I had my ambitions uh, as a soccer player. And it was difficult for me to quit playing soccer and uh, watching soccer and being involved with soccer. Soccer for me, it was, it was an idolatry. It took too much of my time. And when I realized that it was separating me from God, it was something that hindered my closer communion with God, I realized I had to quit soccer. But it was not easy. What is something that is taking more of your time than it should? How have been your actions? Are they preaching? Are you preaching to Jesus? through your actions, through the way you make your deals, through the, way, through the way you associate with people? How is your dress? Is there something in your dress that maybe in this moment the Holy Spirit is touching your heart and saying, you know, maybe I'm wrong in this detail here. In your diet, is there something that maybe in this time the Holy Spirit is telling you, you know, maybe I can improve in this here. Just grab this small spark that the Holy Spirit is uh, uh, bringing to your heart 
and make of it a big fire. Let the Holy Spirit remove from your life these things that bring you too close to the world and come closer to Jesus Christ. Our words, our actions, and our dress. All this should preach for Jesus. And it's possible when we are walking with Jesus, when he's a reality in our lives. Testimony, volume 4, page 633, says the word of God. The words, the dress, the actions should tell for God. Then a holy influence will be shed upon all around them. And even unbelievers will take knowledge of them that they have been with Jesus. Yes, dear brethren. As I said, all these things are important. The way we keep the Sabbath, the way we give our tithe and offerings, the way we dress, the way we eat, all these things are very important in our journey with Jesus Christ. Why are they important? And how can we fulfill these things requiring the word of God? The secret is here in the last part of this text we just read. The word of God says, the world will recognize that they have been with Jesus. Why is the inspiration saying that? That when we keep the Sabbath, when we dress properly, when our actions, our words are all preaching for, about Jesus, why the world recognize that we have walked with Jesus when they see these things in our lives? You know why? Because only who walks with Jesus, who under, with Jesus, only those who understand the love of God and walk with him are able to have words, dress, and actions that are living preachers that tell for God wherever we go. So the secret is walk with Jesus, is contemplate Calvary, is see Jesus, this brother of love we have, see the Father doing whatever he can to save you and me. When we understand it, when we see this love, then we are able to keep his commandments and to be separate from the world. Testimony, volume 5, page 78. Let's read together this verse here, this text. Our only safety is to stand as God's peculiar people. We must not yield one inch to the customs and fashions of this degenerate age, but stand in moral independency, independence, making no compromise with its corrupt and idolatrous practices. So our only security, says the word of God, is for us to maintain this communion with Jesus that keeps us as a peculiar people, is to stand as God's peculiar people, is to stand as friends of God and not friends of the world. God has a peculiar church. God has peculiar children, and he has called us to be this peculiar people. And it's a privilege for us to know the truth as we know today and to stand as God's peculiar people. Why we stand as God's peculiar people, it means we, have, we are having communion with Jesus. Otherwise, we are not able to stand peculiar. And once we have this communion, we are safe in the arms of our Father. We live in a dangerous world, a world full of problems. But with Jesus, with the communion that he offers to us to keep close to him through the reading of his word, through the study of the Bible, through prayer, we stand in communion with Christ and we stand peculiar, different from the world and separated from this world. Dear brethren, all this is impossible to do, to dress different, to keep a different day, to eat different food, to give tithe and offerings, to serve the Lord with all we have and with all we are. It's impossible without Jesus Christ. There's a text from the inspiration that I love and I would like to share with you. Desire of Ages, page 439, says the word of God. Let the repenting sinner fix his eyes upon the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and by beholding he becomes chanted. When we see Jesus, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, working to save the lost, is lighted, scorned, derided, driven from city to city, Till his mission was accomplished, when we behold him in Gethsemane, sweating great drops of blood, and on the cross dying in agony. When we see this, self will no longer clamor for to be recognized. Looking unto Jesus, we shall be ashamed of our coldness, our lethargy, our self-seeking. We shall be willing to 
be anything or nothing so that we may do hard service for the master we shall rejoice to bear the cross after jesus to endure trial shame or persecution for his dear sake so dear friend dear brother and dear sister what is it that is still separates you from god that uh, hinders you to come closer to him is the world really worthy of this separation from god we all know that it's not we know it's not we want to be free from the world we want to be separated from the world and the solution is here fix your eyes upon jesus look at him carrying that cross to calvary start contemplating him in the gethsemane sweating bl uh, blood when he was carrying your sins and my sins then accompany him with that heavy cross on his back carrying it to the calvary with that crown of thorn on, upon his head bleeding in his uh, forehead contemplate him being nailed to the cross contemplate him hanging on the cross and dying for you and for me and then says the word of god here we will be ashamed of ourselves of our lethargy of our self seeking self seeking our own things we will feel ashamed that some small details in your life that the lord tells you and me quit just quit this food that's damaging your health just quit this kind of dress that's not glorifying my name keep the sabbath it's a blessing for you and sometimes we see all these things as being so difficult but when we when we contemplate jesus christ dying for us there on calvary all these things disappear we feel ashamed of ourselves and we are willing to be anything or nothing for the glory of god that we may serve him with our hearts we rejoice to bear the cross after jesus to endure trial shame or persecution for his sake we understand that's better to be a prisoner with jesus than a prince without jesus christ i would like to close this sermon today this message today with a, a text from christ triumphant page 22 says the word of god all who are united with christ will come out of the world and be separate here's the secret to separate from the world is to be united with jesus christ they will not enter into the world from any choice of their own he invites every soul come unto me all we that are that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do you want to be united with Jesus Christ? Do you want to walk with Jesus? Are you tired of this world? Are you already disappointed enough with this world? If you are tired of this world, Christ invites you and me here. Come unto me. He that labor and are heavy laden, I, and I will give you rest. Jesus offers you today at this moment a rest that the world cannot give. He offers you a happiness that the world cannot give. He offers you a life that the world cannot give. He offers you abundant life. He offers you eternal life in happiness without an end. Only accept his invitation. Leave the world. Separate from the world. Let him give you grace and power to overcome those small things that still separate you from him that hinders you of having a closer communion with him. May the grace of Jesus be sufficient for me and for you. May he give us this power to separate ourselves from the world, to over be overcomers in him. May Jesus be a reality in your life and in my life, and may we soon be living with him in a world much better than this one. Amen. Thank you for watching this message. I hope you are blessed by it. And please share it with others the link or the content after listening to this message i feel how important it is to know our fundamentals to know our beliefs and for what we stand for now let us prepare and we will have the closing hymn
May the Lord be praised through this wonderful piece of music. And at this moment, I invite you for the closing prayer. As far as possible, let us kneel down for prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for your wonderful love, and we thank you for this opportunity you have given us today to bless us through this message that we could listen and remember and understand how important it is to understand our fundamentals, how important it is to understand our principles of faith and our role in giving the message for a world that is dying in sin. Please help us, Lord, open our minds and hearts that we would accept the message. We ask you that you would bless the messenger, bless your family around the world, bless thy children, the brothers and sisters that have been watching and those that will watch that they would be blessed. We ask you all of this and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Once again, thank you for watching this message. I hope you are truly blessed by tuning in and having this opportunity to listen to God's word. And please, once again, don't forget to uh, uh, watch tomorrow's message, which will be presented, presented by Brother Peter Lausevic under the title, Obedience, Hard or Easy? May God bless you wherever you are.